Congratulations to your new report on new technologies and nuclear disarmament. Thank you. So, can you share some key takeaways with us? I guess the key takeaway, or one key takeaway, is that nuclear disarmament is possible, and the United States and Russia, as the uh, possessors of the largest nuclear arsenals, have the main responsibility for taking the first steps. And on the one hand, this means um, some doctrinal changes. Um, away from Cold War style nuclear doctrines that are uh, based on, on seeking an, an ability to win a nuclear war uh, towards um, minimal nuclear deterrence, which is uh, based on a more limited goal of deterring uh, nuclear attack. And on the other hand, they also need to address some obstacles um, created by um, some, uh, the evolution of non-nuclear de technologies, uh, notably missile defenses and advanced conventional weapons. Because these technologies are weakening nuclear deterrence in ways that are unconducive to nuclear disarmament. And you mentioned nuclear deterrence, which obviously is a key word in this context. So how do these new technologies affect nuclear deterrence? It's assumed that nuclear armed states uh, don't attack each other out of fear of retaliation. So I don't attack you because I know that you might uh, retaliate, which makes a nuclear first strike suicidal and actually detrimental to both sides. But this assumption only works um, if, the, if, if the nuclear armed, armed states are acting rationally and if their systems are also working perfectly. And it also requires uh, that the other side is able to retaliate in kind, um, meaning that uh, if it's attacked, then it has survivable second strike nuclear forces that uh, can still um, do the retaliation. Uh, otherwise, uh, others, other nuclear armed states might be tempted to strike first, or uh, perhaps more importantly, the country that perceives that its st second strike capability um, is not re reliable. Um, it will try to boost its nuclear forces by modernizing, modernizing them or increasing their numbers. Some of the nuclear te new or evolving technologies are uh, actually questioning the effectiveness of second strike nuclear forces, notably um, missile defenses and precision strike weapons and also cyber capabilities. And unfortunately this is uh, already reality. I mean, uh, China and Russia have um, tried to, and to boost their nuclear arsenals in response to US missile defenses and US plans to de develop long-range long precision strike weapons. Um, whereas Russia has focused on developing new kinds of nuclear weapons. China has or is in increasing its nuclear arsenal. And whereas Russia doesn't see the need to expand its already vast nuclear arsenal, it will also likely not agree to significant nuclear reductions uh, if it believes that this will undermine its nuclear deterrent. So on a positive note, uh, I think some of the new technologies or evolving technologies could actually contribute to nuclear disarmament. Uh, for example, uh, NATO countries and Russia, as I argued in the report, could already afford to give up on nuclear deterrence in the European context because they already have robust conventional capabilities, including precision strike conventional weapons. And um, thinking further uh, in the future, uh, I think some of the technologies that today seem de destabilizing could actually be useful. Uh, for example, missile defenses, they could in theory be used um, to hedge against, against cheating in a, in a nuclear-free world, meaning that a global missile defense system would be used to neutralize any uh, nuclear weapons that might be built in secret. Thank you, Tutti. Really interesting.
we remain looking at the situation. Thank you. Thank you.